What should never happen is the war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. We will act as a facilitator. Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about this very, very important visit of the Prime Minister Imran Khan to Iran first and then to Saudi Arabia. Now the assignment given to him is to make sure that the tension between these two countries, these two Middle Eastern rivals should come to an end. If not an end, primarily it should diffuse to a certain level. <clears throat> so Donald Trump in fact wants, this is what the Prime Minister of Pakistan has categorically mentioned, that he does not believe in wars. So primarily the message was that uh, Iran should also understand and uh, talk about uh, certain related issues and come up with some sort of a solution whereas the Saudis are also ready for talks now and the person who is mediating or is the person who is kind of arbitrating or maybe who is just playing a role just to bring these two countries together is none other than the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan. Now, a couple of very interesting developments. One is about uh, the visit to Iran where he met uh, uh, the Supreme Leader. He also met uh, the President of Iran, Mr. Rouhani and uh, it's been told that that particular meeting was very uh, important, was very uh, conducive and actually in a great environment where they have tried to manage most of the issues. Right after that, the Prime Minister was seen in Saudi Arabia meeting the uh, King of Saudi Arabia as well as the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and obviously all these related issues were also discussed out there. Uh, what we have understood is that the Prime Minister is trying its level best to make sure that these countries should come together and work together rather than there should be a war between the Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now both these countries are huge and have a lot of potential but this is something which is the key and because of the current ongoing tensions and the clash of interests primarily is leading to various proxy wars in so many countries from Palestine to Syria to Iraq even to Yemen for that matter. So what is going to be the future of the ongoing war in Yemen? The current assault of the Turkish forces in the Kurdish area, which is primarily the north, uh, northwest of uh, Syria, what exactly is going to happen because the Americans, they have very categorically told the Turkish uh, leadership that they want a ceasefire in the region. Whereas Mr. Erdogan has very categorically mentioned also that there is no question of ceasefire. He is going to make sure that his interest is taken care of. His interest means the interest of Turkey. Other than that, uh, as we all know, when the two wells of Saudi Arabia were hit by the missiles, the blame was on Iran. And interestingly, at that moment, we all got to know that 5% of the total global production was, was from those two wells. They were shut down for a a few weeks but the oil prices did go up and that is something which countries like Pakistan and so many other developing countries even the Western world cannot afford at the moment so tension has to be <coughs> taken care of to talk about this we have with us in our studio let me introduce you to our panelist on my right is Mohammed uh, Ziauddin Saab again needs no introduction is a senior journalist is a columnist a writer so thank you very much and uh, we'll also be joined in <coughs> by uh, Imran Jansab, he's a foreign affairs expert and uh, is based uh, uh, in USSR. Thank you very much, Jansab, for taking your time out as well and being a part of a show. And uh, in a little while, we'll also be joined in by Rauf Hassan Saab, who's also a senior analyst. But before we start our discussion, uh, let's have a look at this package. As Islamabad is becoming increasingly wary of an escalating conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran, Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has set out on a mission to defuse tensions in the Middle East. The Prime Minister landed in Tehran and held talks with top Iranian leadership. The purpose of his visit, according to government, is to promote peace and security in the region. I told Prime Minister Imran, we welcome any gesture by Pakistan for peace in the region and appreciate his visit to our country, said Rouhani at a joint press conference with the Pakistani Premier. 
Two days after he visited Iran on a mission to defuse tensions, the Prime Minister then went to Saudi Arabia. Prime Minister Imran Khan stressed on avoiding of military conflict and pursuing constructive engagement of all parties as he concludes his talks with the leadership of Saudi Arabia on current Gulf situation. The statement issued on the conclusion of Prime Minister's visit to Saudi Arabia said the Prime Minister conveyed Pakistan's readiness to facilitate efforts for de-escalation of tensions and resolution of differences and disputes through peaceful means. He held separate meetings with Saudi King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Tensions in the Gulf spiked last month after the attack on Saudi oil facilities that halved the kingdom's crude output and set oil markets alight. The deteriorating situation sent alarm bells ringing in Pakistan as any direct conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran would not only bring new challenges but also huge implications for the country. It was because of this that Pakistan decided to reach out all international and regional players to offer mediation and hope that these efforts by the Prime Minister will bear fruit. Zia sahab, <coughs> your take on this visit, sir. How do you see this? Well, <coughs> if you, if you <coughs> don't uh, take all the current available uh, situation, the current situation into, into, uh, into the context, the real context, you, one would feel as if Pakistan is trying to punch above its size. I mean, a country like Pakistan trying to so to mediate or even facilitate, uh, that looks rather very, um, what you call, as I said, they're trying to punch above its size. But then if you look at the context, look at the situation today in the region, Saudi Arabia and Iran are now eyeball to eyeball confrontation. And if it explodes, if there is conflict ex explodes into a war, we will also be affected. Pakistan will be affected and very seriously. And the, uh, and the kind of a con con situation we are in, we cannot sustain that kind of a pressure if there is a war here in this region. So Pakistan needs to be needs to keep its keep itself well informed about what is going to what's happening so that that is the reason perhaps major reason why uh, our prime minister is visiting iran and saudi arabia to understand to know for in the first the first place you would like the depth to know, of the quote uh, yeah interest yeah and the, the i mean issues, there's yes. a reason for visit uh, being uh, that uh, as um, the prime minister mm -hmm. said we want to facilitate nobody has asked me he, he said that nobody has asked him to facilitate. But later on, he said that this was actually the idea of Mr. Donald Trump, the U.S. That president. Was, that was between uh, U.S. and Iran, not between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The Saudi Arabia and Iran conflict is not... So you're basically looking at it uh, from two different perspectives. Yes. Iran and USA yes, and Iran, Iran and Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. They're two different things. Okay. Because Iran and Saudi Arabia's conflict goes back to history. history. It goes back into Islamic history. Uh, the, the political differences between two factions in the, uh, in Islam, in Muslim um, community, uh, got converted into some kind of a sectorial conflict. So that is major. That is a major reason. And uh, people have tried to bring these two factions, Islamic factions, in one at one in one on one platform on one page, but failed continuously if they have failed. So if Pakistan is trying to, because Pakistan has both Shias and Sunnis in good numbers. So we have to be very careful about this does not spill over Pakistan, this conflict. So that is another reason why we need to know exactly what is the stage of these conflicts. Yes, there was this <coughs> uh, uh, couple of very interesting clips from the Indian uh, news uh, channels on the on the Facebook primarily, sir, on social media. And they were making fun of Pakistan that uh, we do not have the capacity to look after our own affairs. And look at Pakistan, they are trying to, uh, you know, sort of diffuse the tension between these two countries as well as trying to sort out issues in Afghanistan, for that matter. And uh, now the question, the counter question is, do we have the capacity to deliver, sir? Because Pakistan itself is a country which is seeking for money, which is seeking for loans, which is seeking for dollars to, to you know, to countries like Saudi Arabia for that matter and, and UAE and even Iran, you know, let's do trade. That's what we believe in. But over here, sir, 
this historical difference do you think and the ideological difference and even it has some religious aspects also do you think that can be eliminated or can maybe it can be eroded to a certain extent but do you think in the long run it is going to be eliminated no, sir you see as i said pakistan is not trying uh, actually not trying to mediate or even facilitate pakistan at the moment no wants to know what is the stage of this conflict because we have to take precautions we have to be prepared for that and that is and in the in the process of understanding what's happening if pakistan could um, i mean rather persuade the two to not to go to war i mean if they they can do it. not talking that's the medi- last thing we are not can, talking about the of, mediation i mean neither talk about facilitation and then there is another reason why pakistan needs to be known to be i mean moving around and that is because of the indians indians are trying to isolate pakistan so when when somebody is trying to isolate pakistan the best you know best thing to do for pakistan is to become much much more prominent at the global affairs and that is also helping pakistan and then especially and then the you know during the last uh, i would say uh, two two months primarily everybody is looking at pakistan from a very different perspective the un speech the way <clears throat> Uh, the prime minister presented the case of kashmir yes. all over sir, yes. all the international forums this recent visit of the prince and the uh, duchess, duchess uh, yeah. of uh, cambridge sir, they are here as well so they are very happy so these things do matter do, these do these are the optics you can see that on cnn and all the major top channels but so if you allow me let's talk to jan saab jan saab first of all say your take on this move by pakistan obviously Uh, it was suggested by none other than the us president mr donald trump but overall when you look at it uh, zia sab says that it has two dimensions one is iran and usa the second is iran and saudi arabia how do you see this sir <clears throat> so i think uh, i mean that argument was right when zia sab mentioned uh, and differentiated between the two countries us and iran and saudis and the iranians but uh at the same time i want, I want to... to say that we are looking at it uh from the wrong perspective because let me explain that actually um strong countries especially the united states when they want to fight against a threat they call it the a preemptive strike and go into other distant countries and fight the enemy over there before the enemy can reach the united states that's the mindset that's the thinking what imran khan is doing i believe what pakistan is doing under his leadership is it is launching a preemptive strategy because as as was mentioned if i'm not wrong pakistan is home to the second largest shia population and the <clears throat> the chances of sectarian conflict rising up are always there so in order to avoid that that threat to pakistan it is important to go and and make peace between these two countries who represent the the shia and the sunni islam and their rivals in the middle eastern region to champion their uh, sect of islam allow me also to explain that the reason uh, one of the major reasons it was mentioned here uh, that uh, saudi arabia did not ask for it the iranians did not ask for it they may not have but there's we also have reports of uae mohammed bin zaid mbz who influenced in mbs arabia. a lot mohammed bin salman mm-hmm. he actually asked um uh other countries i believe that the, the i'm forgetting the name of the country but he asked another country to talk to open a secret channel of talking with iran saudi arabia also asked iraq to open a secret channel with the uh with the iranians the thing that happened was especially after trump's withdrawal from syria and before that when trump did not come to the aid of saudi arabians when their abqaiq oil refinery was attacked believed to be made that attack was believed to be made by an Iranian drone the saudis realized that the united states and saudi partnership it not is not sacrosanct enough where the americans will come to the aid of the saudis if there is an attack on saudi arabia so they realized that that we cannot always rely, rely on the united states in the event of a threat or an attack that's why they have 
secretly, I believe, asked Pakistan and Imran Khan to open a communication channel with Iran. Imran Khan wouldn't just go to Saudi Arabia and Iran with no one asking for that. Of course, Trump asked for that too, but Trump asked it for, between, uh, for the relationship between Iran and the United States because, again, even though the Iranians brought down a U.S. drone a few weeks ago, Trump, despite his threats and threatening tweets and all that, did not really go for an attack, just like previous American presidents have done. So he is trying his best at the same time. However, um, you know, we may dislike President Trump. The one thing that I always give him credit for is that he is not waging wars. He is not going around the world invading countries. That is something we have to appreciate. That is something unprecedented, I would say. So these are like the major reasons why Saudi Arabia and Iran uh, are asking Pakistan. And it all depends on what Saudi Arabia might be willing to do because Iranians have given out the right signal. They have said, mediation or no mediation, we are willing to talk. We do not want war. And we should also remain cognizant of the fact that the Israelis would be extremely upset about what is happening because they want the United States to launch a full-scale war against Iran. And John Saab, the interesting part that, is this... Back channel diplomacy is already on, sir, between Iran and, and Saudi Arabia. And I'm sure most of these issues, at least if they're not sorted out, at least they will be discussed. So two different point of views will come in play. But, sir, uh, first of all, thank you very much, yes. Rausab, uh, for yes, taking out your time and uh, uh, being here, sir. Earlier we were talking about the important visit, uh, which was just undertaken by the <clears throat> uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan so to uh, Iran and then to Saudi Arabia in a very short span of time. I think very crisp to the point kind of meetings were also held. But now, sir, the interesting part uh, is that the trust deficit of the Saudis, I think that was always there in one way or the other, but this time they've accepted it also. But not openly, but I'm sure this is one of the major uh, you know, areas of discussion amongst themselves. If you look at the interview given to the media, sir, Donald Trump, his body language, the way he was addressing and the kind of areas he mentioned. He said, well, uh, you, if you remember in one of the statements a few months ago, he said, well, uh, the king of Saudi Arabia is there just because of us. If we just uh, take our backing out of it, <coughs> maybe a week or maybe less than that, he won't be there. Now, in this case, sir, it seems that the Americans must have asked the, uh, the, the uh, Saudis must have asked the Americans to do something about the Iranians post that uh, attack on the uh, oil facility. Now, one important area is that uh, they have said that we'll send the troops, but each and every penny will be paid by the Saudis. Their boarding, lodging, insurance, every single dollar would be spent by the Saudis. So they'll be the guests out there, right, sir? Secondly, he says, well, Saudi Arabia has been there and he, uh, the Saudis look after our interests. And then he says, well, they are great <coughs> buyers also. I can show you the $110 billion worth of weapon and military equipment was bought and so much more. And it has generated around 50,000 jobs. I mean, he is looking at it from a very transactional point of view, sir. Money, money, money. Money makes the mayor go. And money makes Donald Trump happy. <laughs> Look, I don't know what has been discussed. I've come a little late, so I'm yeah. sorry for that. But I don't know. So please uh, forgive me in case there is any repetition. We have to look at the dynamics which have prompted this. That's very important. So there are dynamics relating to US, to Iran, and to Saudi Arabia. When Trump came into power, he came on the, on the, on the electoral ret rhetoric, so to say, that he was going to withdraw his troops from all over the world. American children, American people belong to America and they must come back home. And I must say that he has stuck it out with that resolve. The most recent withdrawal from Syria is a classic example. There was no announcement. There was no even expression of intention. But it's overnight, he said, come back. And it has led to, uh, uh, to a radically altered dynamic in that part of the world. Another so debate has started that ISIS is going to gain strength well, and well, that, that, that's, maybe the... the that, that, that is yet to be seen. Yeah. Now, when you look at Saudi Arabia, the war in Yemen has not gone well for Saudi Arabia at all. 
particularly this attack. Was it well thought out? It was, was not, the reason? it was not well thought, thought out at all, but it has gone on for four, four and a half years. And the recent attack on the Saudi oil installations you know, possibly was a wake-up call. That look, this has gone on for too to long. Yemen, if you look at the yeah. facilities, sir. So this is this it, is it's a striking distance. This is the, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The war in Yemen was an ill thought out uh, uh, plan, and it has not gone on well for for the for, for Saudi Arabia at all. As a matter of fact, you know, it, the chicken is coming home to roost. And uh, this was this was reflected, you know, in this uh, massive attack on the Saudi oil installations. And let's not forget the fact that that is Saudi Arabia's lifeline. Third country is Iran. When we discuss Iran, basically, although they've weathered it for over three decades, and it is because of uh, the nature of uh, people uh, that the Iranians are, and also the fact, you know, that they have enough income of their own, basically, they've been able to sustain this onslaught, you know, last, lasting almost three decades. Yes. But there is a level of exhaustion there also. There is a level of exhaustion there. There is a, there's a, there is a definitely a level of... Uh, look at the inflation, look at the other issues. I mean, look the, at their economic indicators. The, I mean, the, yes, the, 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 the reality, there are huge problems. The reality that there is growing uh, uh, despondency among the Iranian people and because, because the economic dividends have not been passed on to them. As a matter of fact, you know, life has become far more difficult for them. So, you know, you have a conducive environment in all the three countries, basically. And it is President Trump, uh, uh, you know, uh, who also scuttled the Afghan deal. But then, within two and a half weeks of that, Ambassador Khalil Zad was sitting in Islamabad requesting Pakistan to reconvene, to help in reconvening the dialogue. Which we did. Which we did, once again. So what they're asking of the Taliban is some level of concession so that there is a rationale for them to go back to the negotiating, to, uh, negotiations table. And what that rationale, basically that concession that they're wanting is that either there should be an announcement of a partial ceasefire or there should be a commitment to lowering the level of violence you know, in Afghanistan. So possibly they should secure uh, the latter, not the former. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the Americans are eager to end all their areas of conflict. At least President Trump is eager. Whether he's able to do that or not, he something is depends on the Americans on as, other, other as his also. voters or as his potential voters. Yeah. The way but, he addressed the Indian community when uh, Mr. Modi was there. The way he is handling certain issues, I mean, he is gaining a lot of support from within. That's right. Now, the the fact that which country could possibly do this? Which country? Which was that country which had a workable relation, good workable relations with 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 with, with the U.S., had workable relations with Saudi Arabia, and workable relations with Iran? And you know, you look around the world, and there's no other country but Pakistan. Why not India? Well, India is, that's, is not very close to, and does not have the level of trust with Saudi Arabia that Pakistan has. He gets the highest well, again, civil reward there, no, sir. No, 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 no. It's just, I mean, it's just confined to, it's just confined to uh, trade relations, business, economic. Sir, relations. if we are giving uh, the highest civil award to the princes or that, to that the is, prince for that matter, that is, if that, we are giving, that means that Pakistan is giving them. But that is all, that is all there. But who is guarding the uh, Al Saud dynasty? Who's guarding the holy places in uh, Pakistanis? So, there is no comparing Pakistan's relations with Saudi Arabia with that of India's with uh, Saudi Arabia. I mean, I'm very, 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 very certain about that. All right, and that Iran. So, you know, it speaks volumes of the ascendancy of Pakistan in the international ambit today, and that is what I would like to just take half a minute on that. And I think the, in the person of Imran Khan, Prime Minister Khan, possibly you have that ideal person, ideal person who is equipped with, with, with that personality and that level of passion to do things. And I think now that he is in it, basically, I'm not expecting any miracles. Miracles don't occur in situations like this. But even if there is an easing of tension between Iran and US on the one hand and Iran and Saudi Arabia on the other hand, I think it will be a great achievement on the part of Pakistan. So, uh, answer should be in yes or no. So when it comes to Pakistan and India regarding the Kashmir issue, when it comes to the Pak Akbar issue or, or the regional issue for that matter. So the cases with Pakistan and Iran or Iran and Saudi Arabia because that is in one way or the other regional issue for Pakistan because Iran is our neighbor. Do you think our foreign office and the government of Pakistan in particular, they're doing a good job, a reasonable job or a reasonably good job? I think it's unprecedented in the history, in Pakistan's history that you have uh, taken the Kashmir uh, issue uh, to such a level that mm -hmm. it is now being uh, commented on by the entire international media and the international community. Look at the number of parliaments in which it has been discussed. Right. Look, you know, just Got read it. the Washington Post editorial yesterday and you will know exactly how, did, how does the world look at it, basically. So there's no, the challenge for Pakistan is, now that you have taken it to that pitch, 
how can you maintain it there? Now that, that, that is, is going a to be huge the real challenge for Pakistan. And I think yeah, that indeed. is why some people who are finding fault with it, uh, this in, in the sense, you know, that you know you should not have raised it that high. You should not have sort of you know uh, upped it that way right. that much. They are doing it because they feel that it is it is a huge challenge on, for Pakistan to keep it there and to keep the international community write about it, right. talk about it, and debate it All in right. the parliament. Zia sir, another question arises: <clears throat> the forces. Obviously, when you're talking about the American forces, whatever the number could be, could be 500, could be 1,000, could be 2,000, which will be uh, sent to Saudi Arabia. In addition to what uh, the number is uh, existing at the moment. Now, sir, for example, if these uh, officers or the, uh, the <coughs> law enforcement or whatever you may call them, or the soldiers or the Marines, if they are deployed on the oil facilities, for example, sir, and something happens. Let's suppose there is another attack from the Houthis, not on the best of the Iranians for that matter. They do not even have any clue. And one or two soldiers, they die. That's, that's a high probability case, sir. Do you think that should be considered or that is going to be considered as a direct attack on the USA, sir, from the Iranians and could lead to something wrong also? Well, there is a story going around that uh, <clears throat> neither the Houthis not the Iranians. The debt. It was the Americans themselves. They wanted Saudi Arabia to attack Iran <laughs> in the protests that it has happened. And Saudi Arabia waited the Ameri for the Americans to, to, to take the to give some Maybe, uh, sir, There are the also initiative. news that they had earlier asked them yeah, to do so. Yeah. Was it? Is it true? They, they, this could be true. It could be true. But I'm not very sure that uh, Mr. Bush, Mr. Trump has sent his troops to Saudi Arabia expecting a war. He doesn't, he, I'm not, I'm sure that at the, at the time when the elections are coming on, he would uh, risk his troops for if, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a area which is just about to explode into a war. So he, it's, a, it's a very safe transaction, as you said. He's, he's making money out of it. Nothing. And uh, as far as, uh, um, actually, Mr. Trump is more, much more interested in, get, in getting elected, again, getting re-elected. Mm -hmm. And whatever he is doing, whatever moves he is making, his focus is on that. And his biggest failure would be Afghanistan. Because in Afghanistan, he is not getting the way out to withdraw his troops. What he wants is that Afghan Taliban should accept before the withdrawal, should accept, should stop first violence, and along with it, should accept to negotiate with the Kabul government, which Afghan Taliban are not interested at all. See. Uh, See, it has do gone to this edge. This decision on the 19th of October regarding the uh, elections so that who is going to be the next president of Afghanistan, do you think that result is going to matter? No, that's, that's not going to matter mm -hmm. much. See, it has gone into the heads of the Afghan Taliban. So we are the, we make the graveyards of the empires. We have make, uh, made uh, Britishers, the graveyard for the Britishers, the Soviets. And the Americans are in the making. Another graveyard is being mm -hmm. in the making. It's Americans. So they they are not in a in at all in a in a mood to compromise. On they want a complete control of Afghanistan. They don't want any any other. And as far as that that continues to I mean that is that is that continues to be their approach towards Afghanistan. There is not going to be any peace in Afghanistan. And we should be warned. Pakistan should be warned that we will have to be prepared because Afghan Taliban is not going to listen to us at all. And they would not, I mean, if they came down to Islamabad to have some kind of a, a re revival of the talks, they came in only because of their own purpose, for their own reasons. Absolutely, they had not, their own not, interest. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, is, Afghanistan is much more difficult for us than, uh, we should be a much more a challenger, challenging situation for us than any other yeah, external. Pakistan currently is stuck, Pakistan and Iran issue. And Pakistan, Kashmir, so Faisal Kashmir. India regarding Kashmir, Pakistan, Kashmir and Afghanistan, has, has, so has, too much in our place. Kashmir has two you know, categories. One is 
the problem it is a it is india's problem it's not our problem it is a dispute dispute is our problem and as far as the problem is concerned see for the 72 years if the, the, the largest democracy could not win over the hearts and minds of 7782 million people and they're not going to you know uh, rather overcome that resentment that uh, hatred towards india uh, after they lift the top down at least the and issue of the kashmir has been internationalized that's, that's it is not the reason where oh, yeah. even i was watching another report on uh, on one of the missing boys in kashmir i think it was bbc that had prepared it that the mother is looking for the son and she doesn't know where the son is it's a young 22 See, year old so the entire boy. world yeah. is going to focus was on hundreds and thousands of such stories focus sir. on the human rights violations absolutely and, sir. India and this is what pakistan had in their mind yeah. even then the, the See, pakistani mission Faisal, which was presenting the case india will the have to talk to the talk to the oriat talk to the uh, in, uh, kashmiri people and when they talk to the kashmiri people they'll have to concede because they, they, they simply cannot keep took them almost 70 million people to 75 days to see they had, they had kept 700000 soldiers even before they withdrew this 370 uh, article now they they have um, in, in, it expanded that force to about 100000 now all right all right sir. now sir uh, talking about these uh, negotiated settlement now uh, there was a story that the uh, imran sahab that the prime minister when he was in saudi arabia he mentioned that to the Uh, king of saudi arabia as well as to the crown prince uh, that uh, iran is willing for a negotiation they are uh, looking forward to a negotiated settlement now let's identify the areas sir both are oil rich countries energy resources are plenty in those areas as far as infrastructure is concerned obviously the saudis they have an edge great weapons and everything both of them want to be uh, the you know the main powers in the region also plus the ideological differences i'm sure sir they can't be sorted out in a day or two because they have very deep roots in your point of view sir let's identify a few areas where you think uh, the conflict is and where you think countries like pakistan can play a good role <clears throat> okay so before i do that i just want to answer one of the questions special that you asked from rahul sir when you said why is it that the saudis are not asking india which is also very close to saudi arabia now to uh, create you know uh, talk peace between the two countries one of the major reasons is as was mentioned uh, also that you know there there are doubts that the uptake oil refinery attack was perhaps i don't know but perhaps it was made by the united states even if that wasn't the case we know that the united states national security establishment i'm not talking about trump I'm talking about other national security establishment the whole the whole thing they do not want peace between iran and saudi arabia one of the major reasons is the sale of weapons and you know the influence that they gain through that and remember india is a reflection of us interest in the region india is just like israel so india does not want peace between iran and saudi arabia and the saudis and the iranians know that that's why they do not ask india to come and make peace between them because india is not interested in that india doesn't want that just like india doesn't want peace in afghanistan because that would meet the demise of their interest because the kabul regime would be gone <clears throat> doesn't matter who the who the regime is led by ashraf ghani or abdullah abdullah so that was that just wanted to ask you a question what are the conflicts between the two countries iran and saudi arabia listen the bad blood blood goes back decades ago uh they started out the whole thing started out remember this is a mistake that many people make they always see their rivalry uh from the lens of shia and sunni islam that's that's a mistake that we make because that was a cover for that what they both wanted was political influence the reasons were political iran wanted to be the major player of the middle eastern region and saudis wanted them to be the major the major players so <clears throat> I'm sorry so when the 1979 invasion happened so the soviet invasion of afghanistan and that was also the time when the iranian revolution happened so the shia islam was gaining a lot of fame and popularity around the world the saudis wanted to tackle that and the soviet invasion of afghanistan presented a great opportunity they used that siding uh, with the united states and pakistan's isi at the time to use their money uh, to 
to propagate and create influence for the Sunni Islam. So the reasons were political. Now, the bad blood goes to that history after the Shah was deposed and the Iranian revolution happened. Then a lot happened. You know, the WikiLeaks thing came up when it was revealed that the Saudis wanted the Americans to cut the head of the snake, meaning Iran. And at the same time, the Saudis are befriending the Israelis, and you know that Israel and Iran never get along. The real enemies are Iran and Israel, not as much as Saudis and the Iranians. So there is still chance for peace between these two, these two uh, Muslim brotherly nations. And I, as I said, Imran Khan is doing great in trying to preemptively address this issue. I also want to point to an important issue here. And that is? Because remember, uh, since the 80s, every time Pakistan's utility was considered by any country, especially the strong countries in the world, it was always to wage some sort of a war. The United States wanted to roll back the Soviets in Afghanistan, so Pakistan was, partnered, uh, was a partner. Then after 9-11, the United States invaded Afghanistan, and Pakistan was made the partner. It was forced to become a partner. This is unprecedented. This is different. Now peace is being sought, and Pakistan's help is being sought for that. The United States wants to make peace in Afghanistan. Pakistan's help is there. Saudi Arabia and even the Trump asked for peace between Iran and the U.S. and Iran and Saudi Arabia. Again, Pakistan is helping achieve that. So that is great. I mean, that is something different now. Now Pakistan is playing a role between lots of different countries for the purpose of achieving peace instead of for the purpose of waging some sort of a war. Uh, again, this is something different and uh, something great. Uh, and like I said, <clears throat> the reasons for conflict are many between mm -hmm. Iran and Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, the points where they intersect are also there. And Pakistan needs to aggressively find those and work on those and bring these two countries together. Because remember, the U.S. national security establishment, Israel and India, absolutely do not want this to happen. Uh, right. And Pakistan needs to understand that. Now, now that, that's a different approach altogether, that the Americans do not want it, and the Indians do not want it, whereas Pakistan, if they are giving that much, sir, they're putting a lot of effort. Uh, and the people of Pakistan in general, so they're expecting a little too much from the Prime Minister also, that the Prime Minister is going to sort it out, you know, in two visits. But the real problem is that, sir, uh, when you talk about the proxy war that's been going on between these two countries for such a long time, whether you talk about Syria or you talk about Palestine, you talk about Qatar issue, you talk about Yemen, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So they have invested a lot in the proxy wars. Do you think, sir, things will change or the ideology and the kind of investment that has been done to create that hatred and to create the difference, basically, between the two brotherly countries uh, is a little too much to, to, to go against? Well, let's look at, let's look at uh, why is there this problem between the two countries, you know. And I, I think uh, our friend uh, Jansab has all, already commented on it, basically. But no, this, this, this uh, problem is rooted in faith. The schism, the breakup that occurred 1450 years ago, the Shia and Sunni divide, Arab and Ajam divide, this is rooted in faith. This is rooted in history. For all these 1450 years, there has been a conflict between the two, the, uh, the you know, followers of the two sort of you know, parallel faiths. This is rooted in uh, culture, in traditions, in, 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 in being who's relevant, who's more relevant. You know, one uh, uh, says that it's religion. not religious. I think and religion is the first and the foremost important part of it. Well, it is, it, 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 they don't technically follow the same religion. You know, the, 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 the parallel, differences are the there, sir. parallel thought processes, oh, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then it is also rooted in strategic interests, respective strategic interests, the expansion. Both countries want to expand. And this has been commented on by you as well as our friend in the U.S., basically. So, you know, uh, the American, uh, the, the, the Iranians are interested in expanding their uh, strategic interests. Yemen is one. Lebanon is another. Syria is another. So many examples that can be given. The Saudis, on the other hand, have been on the defensive for some time because you know they 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 they, they were not uh, thinking in terms of expanding the interest. You know, it has occurred with the uh, with the ascent of the current uh, uh, head there, MBS. Or maybe He's the one maybe basically. maybe uh, the Crown Prince has also realized that everybody every wise person at that time was telling him not to attack uh, Yemen. So, so and after spending billions of dollars and four and a half years after losing so many. 
uh, soldiers killing so many people uh, so, and eventually realizing that, uh oh, hold on, we are so, very vulnerable. So we should. I, this change of dynamic. Think otherwise, yeah. This change of dynamic happened with MBS, Mohammed bin Salman. Basically, before that, Saudi Arabia was not an aggressive posturing country, but with, with MBS. In, in the saddle, it has become a different kind of country. And this different kind of country, unfortunately, uh, has, been, has, been, has been dealt uh, uh, a deadly hand, both in Yemen and Saudi Arabia. Other another question, sir. So, uh, may I ask you another question yeah, here, sir? Yeah. And that is, if you remember, the biggest surprise for me wasn't the speech of Mr. Imran Khan. It was another statement by none other than the MBS regarding Khashoggi's murder. And there was an absolute different opinion this time in coming from him. That, well, you know, since he admits it, he was the crown prince and whatever happened, he did not know. But he accepted, initially there was a different statement, sir. And a lot of people believe that this was done by the Americans and maybe, you know, they're pushing him also. Khashoggi was done by the Americans? No, 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 no. Whoever, but the, the, the crown prince was kind of, you know, he is under, under the microscope by the Americans at the moment, sir. Well, definitely, it? most definitely, they have lethal proof of who did it. The Turks have it, the Americans have it, the Brits have it, all of them have it. So he's under the microscope, not just under a microscope, but uh, something far, far, far more lethal than just a microscope. So, you know, Saudis have been on a weak wicket. They have been playing on a weak wicket. The Iranians have not on a weak wicket. They have, as I said in response to your first query, they have, respond, they have weathered it out for almost three decades. You know, in spite of these heavy restrictions you know, which have been imposed on them by the entire the, world. The, the survival, it's a survival out. story. So. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a remarkable story. Yep. It's a civilizational approach. Basically, they believe in the civilization that they have inherited. So, it's a, it's a, that way. But, so the important thing for us to understand is that uh, well, uh, I must also say that I am not one to believe in the kind of conspiracies, you know, which are being hashed around and talked about, you know, uh, in the in the in the corridors these days. Uh, I think, I think for once, America is definitely interested in withdrawing from the world stage, in terms of wars or waging wars. I think they, there's a level of genuineness about it. Well, of course, nothing can be said for for uh, uh, definite. Maybe there are. You know, there are divisions within the American administration, White House against the Pentagon, and I think this is quite understandable also. But, you know, the withdrawal from Syria, to me, is ample reason for me for, for, to believe that there is a definitive push to, you know, to, to, to sort of walk out of conflict zones. I mean, a lot of... I think this is, this is a market. A lot of Kurds... So, it, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it, it's a great opportunity for Pakistan to redefine itself, to redefine its presence in the world. To redefine its character in the world, to redefine well, its role this is in maybe, the world, maybe, maybe, uh, and I this think is the time that Pakistan I, I is getting really, itself really. recognized I mean, it's, at all it, the international it's forums. It's a remark remarkable opportunity, mm -hmm. and I think you know uh, we're possibly on the cusp. Even as I said, you know, I don't expect right. any miracles. I don't right. think that there are going to be any solutions to this crisis in overnight or in a week or ten days or right. fifteen days or a month. But at least we're but moving in the, the right way, direction. Things will be sorted out. The very fact, you know, that we are mm -hmm. playing that role or we have been asked to play that role. Is a remarkable achievement on the Pakistan on the Maybe part of the, Pakistan it's and also the leadership the that the Pakistan the international uh, giants have in us, I yeah, guess. Sir. But anyway, sir, sir, thank you very much. Yes, sir. That was a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much, Jan Sir, for your uh, participation as well. And that's all we have uh, for this. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, inshallah.